I'm counting down all the minifigures from Series 15 to tell you guys all about my favorites. And stay tuned for the full review here on Talk Bricks. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Talk Bricks, So I bring you the latest in LEGO news and reviews. Don't forget to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos, but let's get right to it. Michael here, and I'm doing something a little different with my Series 15 review. I'm counting down all the minifigures to my number one favorite one from the series, and I want to know all yours too. So as I go along, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and leave me your list. So let's get started. At number 16, we have the Kendo Fighter. I really like the details that are printed on the torso, and I especially love the added details on the legs. The painted details on the mask really help it pop. Looking at the face underneath, we can see a headband and an angry, determined look. This figure's main accessory is two wooden swords, and it has no back printing. At number 15, we have the Laser Mech. This one falls low in the list because it has a very similar mold to ones that we've gotten in the past, but this one does have a lot of really nice bright silver details. Looking at the torso underneath, we can see this blue and silver pattern that I think reminds me of Tron. From the side, we can see the blue laser piece that is a dual mold. From the back, we can see the wing pieces which just clip on there, and they also have some black outlining. They can also be posed. At number 14, we have the Jewel Thief. She has the Black Widow hairpiece in black with a mask printed on the face. The torso has some really nice details and they all continue onto the legs. She has two accessories, a grappling gun and a jewel. And here's a quick shot of the back. At number 13, we have the Farmer. This one also includes a minifigure scale pig with some really nice printing. This one reminds me a lot of the Scarecrow that we got in the past with the pitchfork and the same hat. From the side, we get a great look at the dual molding on the legs to create the boots. There's also a really nice flannel texture that's printed on each arm. From the back, we can see a great continuation of the overall print from the front. At number 12, we have the Animal Control Officer, and she's got a very disgusted face, and that's because of the skunk that's included. But she's not upset all the time with this double-sided face. She has a nice print on the torso, and if we look from the side, we can also see the badge printed on her dual molded arms. I really appreciate the extra detail of the printing on the side of the legs. Her main accessory is this large net piece. And here we have a quick shot of the back with the great printing on the tail of the skunk. At number 11 we have the janitor, and I really love the details of the uniform print. This print feels very worn down and dirty, and I especially love the way the printing continues onto the legs as he has that rag hanging out of his pocket. From the side, we can see the dual molding of those sand blue sleeves and the mop piece, which can be used in either orientation. And there's no printing on the back. At number 10, we have the astronaut. And as we pull up the gold visor, we can see the smiling face beneath. This print features a classic space design, and I love all the asymmetry with the way that it continues down onto the legs. Even looking at each of the sleeves, they have a unique print. From the side here, we can see a great continuation of the print on the legs, as well as the flag piece with the classic space logo. Finally, from the back, we can see the classic space air tank. At number nine, we have the wrestling champion. And I just really like him because he reminds me of watching wrestling as a kid. I love the print of the championship belt and all of the garish makeup on the face. The print continues onto the legs, and as we look at the side, we can see that the print is continued to create lightning bolt details that's accomplished with the dual molding for the boots. We can also see the great arm printing. The accessory included is the trophy piece, which we've gotten before. This minifigure includes an all-new mullet hair piece, which is so hilarious, and it looks great from the back. As we remove the hairpiece, we get a great look at the remainder of the torso print. At number eight, we have the Frightening Knight, and I think he's so frightening mostly due to the face that we can see printed underneath. This knight is decked out with armor from the helmet and the shoulder piece to all the chainmail printed on the torso. I love the way that the print continues down under the legs, and this design is really enhanced by the dual molding on the legs. His two accessories include this really nicely printed bear shield, and an all-new mace piece, which has a rubber end. We can also see here the printing on the arms to represent gauntlets. And here on the back, we can see there's a bit more printing on the torso to complete the look. At number seven, we have the Flying Warrior. This character is all decked out in gold. As we remove all of the armor, we can really see the gold print beneath. This is a very metallic gold, which really helps the character pop. And I love the way that the print continues onto the legs. His armor and helmet design feature lots of bird details. We can see feathers sculpted in, and the helmet even features a bird's head at the top. The wings give him an impressive size, and the armor helps bulk him out. You can see his main accessory here, which is a gold spear. 
We also get a great look at a continuation of the printing on the legs. From the back we can see that the wings are attached with those gold clip pieces, and with the armor removed we can see that there's no printing beneath. At number 6 we have the Tribal Woman, and she features the same hair sculpt that we've gotten in the past. She features an all new print on the feather pieces, which adds a nice pop. The printing on the torso continues onto the legs, and it has all this really great fringe detail. The print is fully enhanced by the dual molding that happens on the arms and the legs. And from here we can see the continuation of the print on the legs and the great fringe detail on the arms. One thing that really sets this figure apart is the all new infant piece. You can see it looks so great with that cute little smile. It can be held in the hand or attached to the bracket that sits around the neck. And it looks really great the way that it seamlessly butts up against the back. Starting out the top 5 we have the fawn. He has a really nice smile with that beard on the chin, and I think that this brand new piece with the hair, horns, and ears really helped this figure get its signature look. The printing on the chest has all sorts of hair details, and there's a nice detail above the hips. From the front we can see that the accessory, which is this flute, has a nice printed pattern to create all the different holes. But this fawn wouldn't be complete without the all new legs. It features some printing on the front, and as we see from the side, it creates that iconic shape of the goat style legs. And here we have a quick shot of the back. At number 4 we have the ballerina. I think this figure was a fun surprise for the series, and it starts off with that great ruffling piece that goes around the waist. This figure has a really sweet smile, and I love the printed details in the bun piece. The costume is really set apart by all the silver detail. The ballerina's shoes also get a touch of that silver detail, and I love the way these were created. On the back we have a really nice continuation of the print from the front. At number 3 we have the clumsy guy, and I can't help but feel bad for this guy. He has a head wrap which is an all new piece, and his face has such a distressed look with the black eye and the band-aids. He has a cast on his leg and uses two all new crutch pieces, which may be a result of slipping on the angry banana peel that's printed on the torso. From the side we get a good look at the dual molding for the short sleeves, as well as the dual molding on the one leg to create the cast. Taking a closer look, we can see that there's printing on the front and side of the foot to create all of the signatures from his friends. You can even make out some of the names. And here's a quick shot of the figure from the back. At number 2 we have the Queen, and this one goes perfectly with the King that we got in a previous series. I love the details of the fabric pieces. Again we have a red cape and this spotted cape which goes over each other to create that great over the shoulder look. The torso print features some really nice floral patterns, and I love the way that the gold continues from the torso to this all new dress piece. At the very bottom we can see hearts and diamonds, which gives me a little bit of a queen of hearts vibe. This new dress piece is a big departure from the ones that we've gotten in the past, and I think that this one is a great new element that I hope they use a lot more. From here we also get a look at that great hair piece and the crown that sits on top. From the back we can see the remainder of the hair sculpt and the capes. And finally at number 1, my favorite figure of the series is of course, the shark suit guy. These costume characters always tend to be crowd favorites and this one didn't disappoint. The shark is set apart from most minifigures as it features custom arms for the fins. There's a simple print on the torso and this figure features two faces, one a more scared face and the other one a smiling face. The rest of the shark is captured by this headpiece which continues onto the back, and it features some really nice shaping. So there you have it folks, all 16 figures ordered by my favorites. But these are just my favorites, and I know that all of you guys are going to have your own opinion. I can't wait to hear all of what you guys think about the figures, and which ones were your favorites. There were so many fun minifigures in this series to choose from, and it was a really hard decision. I tried to prioritize things like new parts, great prints, clever designs, and just ones I liked. But those are just my thoughts about the figures, and I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you look for in a best minifigure, and which were your top three? And if you like what you saw here, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up down below and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. That's all the time we've got for today. Thanks, and have a good one! Hey guys, Michael here. Click on the send notation to watch all the pack openings. And don't forget to subscribe.